I'd like you guys to do something for me for just a second. Take your hands, hold them out in front of you, give your fingers a little bit of a wiggle. Thanks, we'll, uh, we'll come back to that. I have a job where I get to combine two of my favorite things, science fiction and dessert. My job title says that I'm an engineer, but what I really do is teach robots to help out in bakeries. Now, we've all seen in the news and the media that robots are taking our jobs, but I would just like to clarify one thing to start. Robots don't necessarily do jobs. They usually do tasks. And when I automate something, it's usually just one part of somebody's job. And it's usually something that they don't want to be doing or shouldn't be doing anyways. And we'll get into why. What I'd really like to do is give you guys a little window into what it's been like for me and some of the things that I've learned to appreciate about people and some of the human experiences behind robotic automation. Now, if you're wondering how I got into this, it all starts with my own relationship with work. Now, you all probably are or have been a young person and have probably worked some pretty awful jobs for money. And you're not alone. I've, I've definitely been there too. Once when I was uh, 18, I had a job helping repaint airplanes and almost lost an eye to a chemical burn for $10 an hour. Another job I had was picking ice wine grapes at uh, midnight in sub-zero temperatures. That last experience actually inspired me to work with a team in university to try and automate grape picking. We used machine learning to teach a robot what a cluster of grapes looks like and really quickly found out that our first model couldn't tell the difference between a cluster of grapes and a computer keyboard. But projects like that got me interested in helping people out using automation, and I've been doing that ever since. So, like most people, I come into work in the morning, I pour myself a cup of coffee, I go sit at my desk, check my email, laugh maniacally while plotting the robotic downfall of civilization. Well, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, I don't drink coffee every morning. Why don't we go back to the start of an average project for me? If you want to automate something, how does it happen? Well, the first thing that happens is you probably own a bakery. One of the perks of owning a bakery is a free subscription to Baking and Snack magazine with headlines like Top Speeds in Muffin Town or Flatbread on the Rise. But these magazines are more than just funny headlines. They're often the first way that somebody finds out that robots can now work in bakeries. So this might give you the idea of something that you can automate. Typical reasons are they're usually things that are dull, dirty, or dangerous in the short and long term for employees. In one bakery, employees were having to hold icing bags for hours on end, giving them bad hand cramps. And the idea of a robot coming in to do this for them seemed like a dream. I talked to a man once whose job it was to load milk crates onto a pallet. And he said from doing this job for years, he could barely move his arms past about here. He ended up becoming the operator of a robot that was so efficient at doing this job that when I was helping test it, I ended up getting a repetitive strain injury that took about three weeks to recover from, just from grabbing milk jugs and putting them onto a conveyor. So you take a video, you get in touch and say, hey, can you automate this? And a lot of the time, the answer is going to be yes, but sometimes the answer is no. I still remember a video of a man icing cinnamon buns, and he was taking a spatula and slathering the icing on top of a tray of them and then taking his gloved hands and going into all the nooks and crannies just like this. Now, I'll tell you right now, you can't just teach a robot to do this. I mean, with enough time and money, I'm sure anything's possible, but in order to be reliable and cost-effective, traditional robotic automation usually needs tasks that are simple, controlled, predictable, you know, boring. I know a lot of these jobs are boring too because the first part of automating anything is I have to do that job. I have to learn how to do it. And this part's usually not, to, not so bad. I can usually learn how to do something just from watching somebody else do it. Now the problem is, a robot arm is a lot less like you and I, and more like a set of expensive connected broomsticks powered by a fancy calculator. And when you buy a robot arm, it's like a blank canvas. It's really only as good as the person behind it. It has no purpose until you give it one. And they take everything you say literally. You have to talk to it in a language it understands using instructions like, move here wait for a signal, open or close a gripper. Speaking of grippers, humor me again for a second. Take your hands, put them in front of you, give them a look, wiggle your fingers. Our hands are some of the most amazing things. They can do anything. Robots don't have these. I mean, some people spend years trying to create robotic hands like ours, but in order to stand up to the demanding environment of working in a bakery, 
We usually have to create specific tools for the robot to do specific tasks. And so the robot hands usually end up looking like this. This one only picks up muffin pans, but not all muffin pans, specifically just this type of muffin pan. This one only spreads unbaked coconut stack. I mean, you could use it as a, a dog brush or a, you know, a back scratcher if you wanted to. This one only scoops, scoopable things. I'll tell you right now, I'm really glad to have one of these and not a scoop for a hand like some kind of ice cream pirate. Things get even more interesting when we need the robot to see or even feel. If I want to show a robot what a cookie looks like coming by on a conveyor, I could use something simple like a photoelectric sensor. And this is a sensor that shoots out a beam. If you break the beam, it tells the robot that there's something there. But it doesn't really care if it's a cookie or me coming down the conveyor. We could use something a little closer to our own eyes, a camera. One thing that's important to know, though, is that cameras that robots use to find things usually have to be pre-trained on specific shapes and patterns or colors. This is what it'd be like for you. Imagine you're working in a bakery and you don't recognize anything until a Danish comes in front of you, at which point you say, hey, I recognize this. I'm 60% sure that this is a Danish, but my boss says that I can't decorate it unless I'm at least 80% sure. Some robots have built-in force sensors that they can use to feel the world around them. I sometimes use these sensors to get the robots to just bump around blindly until they find something that they're, they're looking for. It also means I get to tell people that I use robots how to use their feelings. Now, if a robot can see or feel to some extent, how well can it do a task in a bakery? Well, that really depends. Some things we think could be difficult end up being easy for the robot. If we want to write I love you in German on a thousand cakes, all we have to do is stream the pattern to the robot, and it'll do it the, exactly the same every single time. Turns out the hard part is just deciding when to turn the icing on and off and how fast for it to flow. Believe it or not, you and I are actually good at doing this down to milliseconds without even thinking about it. And so the robot still needs us to make those decisions for it. Now, something we think would be easy, like grabbing a tray of cookies from a conveyor and putting it into a baking rack, can be a really frustrating thing to automate because all the real world variables that change. And when you get them wrong, like mass and friction, you end up sending bunt cakes flying across a bakery. Now, Despite these challenges, we get there. And when things are running well, we get to feel something that the robot can't. Pride, satisfaction. If I was going to put it in terms that anybody can understand, it'd be like playing with dominoes. Imagine those times in your life where you set up a pattern of dominoes, and you knock the first one over, and you got to watch them all fall in a sequence. And just imagine if those dominoes could get back up again, and you could watch them all fall forever in a loop. It's pretty close to what working with robotics feels like for me. So how do other people react? How do people in a bakery react to these, these robots? Industrial robots have this reputation of being these scary things that you need to lock up in a cage to keep people safe. The big difference with the robots I work with is they're a new generation called collaborative robots, or cobots for short. And these are robots designed to work alongside and assist people safely. And they'll you know, slow down if they see you coming near, or uh, you know, stop if uh, something unexpected comes in and they hit it. The overall effect is that it feels like the robot knows that you exist. It feels like it knows that you're there. And that makes people feel safe. They'll often gather around taking videos, pictures, sometimes giving the robots names. And eventually it becomes normal to work right next to the robot and you treat it like any other piece of equipment. Majority of the reactions I've seen have mostly been positive, not just from employers, but from employees as well. People are usually pretty happy to see the robots coming because it means out of all the tasks they're juggling, one simple repetitive one will be removed. Now, I only work in one industry, but these experiences have really changed the way that I see robotic automation. It's stopping this faceless force now that I've started to see some of the human side behind it. More importantly, it's really changed the way that I see people and just how amazing they really are. If you gave me 18 years to teach a robot and I taught it to do one thing every eight weeks, it would only be able to do 117 things. It'd be able to do them well and consistently and fast. But think about all the things that you and I were able to do by the time we were 18, whether our parents were happy about that or not. In most bakeries I visit, people are retiring Nobody's coming to replace them. 
and there's just not enough people to go around. People are like gold, and everyone's competing for them. And so you end up with this thing where the tasks that can be automated are, and the tasks that are simple for a human, but not for a robot, still need people to do them. And sadly, a lot of these tasks are neither rewarding nor lucrative, despite the fact that somebody can just walk in and do something right away that would take me months to teach a robot how to do. With developments in artificial intelligence like reinforcement learning, there may come a time where robots could do some of these tasks as well. But until then, people and their, albeit underused, amazing abilities are still our best bet. I'll leave it up to you to decide if robots are a problem or a solution. But once in a while, just for me, wiggle your fingers, appreciate yourselves, the people around you, and all the things that you can do that I can't get my robots to do.